Welcome to NCC Unplugged, the podcast from Norman Christian Church, where conversations, community, and culture converge. Welcome to another NCC Unplugged. We are excited you are listening to our staff roundtable today. I don't know what day it is for you that you are listening. Today for us is November 5th, which means it's election day. All of us in this room have voted. Some of us have our I voted stickers on. Uh, so you are listening to this in the future. So don't tell us the results. We are not sure of it quite yet. Uh, but it is a pretty uh, important day. And we finished our series on election stuff, our kingdom of God emphasis. Um, and so just kind of an interesting day here as we gather together for our roundtable. We have no agenda. Uh, we have nothing really slated to talk about, um, but we are recording this a few hours later than we should have. I dropped the ball on scheduling, took a few hours to clean up the ball, but here we are. We're finally <laughs> gathered to talk. Uh, so I really, I, I just want to talk a little bit because this is definitely not my first mistake as a minister. Um, in fact, a few Thursdays ago while speaking, I, I flubbed up my words a little bit and got all flustered with what I accidentally said about, it was like bathroom humor. I, I remember exactly what it was. Do you want me to say it? No, it's okay. <laughs> okay. We'll let them. It, it was about bathrooms and things that happened there. Um, it got a good chuckle. But it did. Yeah. So I wanted to open up a little bit. What are some of the flubs, mess ups that you guys have had in ministry? Let the people know that you are human. Mm-hmm. What are some of the things that you remember doing in ministry, whether it's something you said, uh, something you did, something you didn't do that you should have done. Anything come to your mind when I say... Looks like Garrett is very pregnant with a story over there. <laughs> I have a good one, and it's really embarrassing. <laughs> and it's... So at our last church, I was... Uh, we were leading worship, and my sister was there. So she was helping, and Isabella was helping me as well. And so the three of us were singing, and I was introducing my sister to the congregation. And I said, you know, um, this is my sister Isabella and my wife, Corey, which is backwards, obviously. And everyone laughed, which wasn't the embarrassing part. The embarrassing part was then I said something, you know, we're from West Virginia, (laughs) sister wives and stuff like that. You're so, trying to get out of it, and you yeah, just made it worse. So I called my wife, my sister wife, and my sister, my <laughs> sister wife, <laughs> referencing oh, West Virginia funny. in the process. So that was a foot-in-the-mouth moment. Yeah. <laughs> I got a good one. Uh, this was at the previous church we were at, too, so nothing like this happened there. But I, uh, I was working in the tech booth, and they were praying, and I should have been praying too, but I was watching videos from my phone. And just that day, a group of us went and shot guns. And I, it was the first time I ever shot a 50 caliber sniper rifle, which was scary and amazing at the same time. So the entire church is silent. Well, I forgot that I had my phone plugged into oh, the computer. <laughs> oh, it was into the computer. Oh, it was in the computer. Yeah. So while the preacher is praying, you hear, I don't know about this, guys, but I'll give it a shot. Boom. <laughs> I I was so embarrassed. Matthew. Was so embarrassed. So I've I've learned my lesson. And uh yeah, I don't I don't do that anymore. Uh yeah. And so did everybody do the uh, tech booth stare where they oh. turn around and see what's going on? Yeah, at times like infinity. It was <laughs> it was bad, and I had nowhere to hide. And it's because the tech booth wasn't up in a balcony. It was it was down low. So, mm. yeah. Jonathan, do you have anything? Well, you pointed at me like, oh yeah, I assume you have one, so you can go next. <laughs> and I do. Um, it was pretty early on, and this is when I learned to never ever use slang that I don't fully 100% understand. Ah, so you're trying to fit in with the kids a little bit? Yeah, I was like, I've heard them say this, I'll say it. I think I know what this is. Yeah, I'm not going to say what I said, because it was so inappropriate. It's like a really bad word? No, it wasn't a bad word, it was just like a phrase I really should not have used. Okay, okay. And I used it kind of loudly, because I was trying to make, make a point. And then later, a couple of the senior guys came to me and they were like, you probably shouldn't say that. Like, that was really bad what you said. I was like, okay, I'm never going to say any slang ever again, yeah. so I don't. That's good. Yep. Or fully understand it or ask the kids first before you use yes. it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, well, I've heard you guys say it, so 
let's talk about yeah, that. So right? fault, so, right? yeah. uh, that was that was an early on mistake. Yeah, yeah, good. I'm feeling a little bit better about the mistake <laughs> that I was going to share. Um, I feel like most of my mistakes here um, fall into the realm of forgetting who was scheduled for a various Sunday morning. And so my mistake actually just happened last week. Um, I needed a substitute at the last minute. And so I was asking someone from elementary if they could move over to preschool. And in the meantime, while I was waiting for her to respond to me, she, I got someone else to cover the position. And so I texted her back and said, you can go back to elementary to your regular spot this morning. And she texted me back and said, well, Allison, I don't actually think I'm scheduled this morning. And so like I had confused her because she was scurrying to try to figure out like how to get here to serve when she wasn't originally planning on it. And I was like, no, no, this was my fault. Like if I would just look at my schedule instead of trying to memorize 40 positions on Sunday morning, I wouldn't run into so many problems with knowing who's going to be where. So I felt bad for her because she like was like, oh, I can come, I can come. But it was not her mistake. It was mine. Joshua, do you have anything, any mess ups during ministry? I'm sure you do, but what, what comes lot, to the top? Lots of them, but I don't, I don't have a great story. I, it seems like so many times I've gotten up to make announcements and left out the most important detail, like how to register or when oh, something yeah, is. Yeah. I was going to say scan the QR code, right? That's the yeah, most important yeah, part. That's right. Yeah. Scan the QR code. <laughs> We could just get that, just just like a replay, scan the QR code. Um, but then other things, like if I'm preaching and you get into an illustration, sometimes you get way off of your notes and you carry it further than you wanted to carry it. And then maybe go into what Jonathan said, maybe something like you end up saying something you never intended to say, and mm. that maybe isn't, isn't even as appropriate as you want it to be. You get caught up in the moment. Yeah. Those kind of things happen. Yep, so. yep, yep. So right now as we sit... Uh, Beginning of November, we're looking towards Thanksgiving, towards Christmas a little bit. So we'll shift our focus to ministry and kind of the things that are in front of us. Um, I already have my Christmas series outlined. I know where we're going to go throughout December. Um, I'm, it, it's interesting when I'm looking forward uh, ahead of time to these different sermons. I get so excited on the topics as I'm researching and I'm looking at the scriptures and I'm reading through those and how to... I see the pattern in there and what we're going to use for those. And then I get overly excited about the future and I'm like, Oh yeah, I got a sermon to write today for this one. And it's not that I'm not excited about the one to write this week, uh, but just it, it happens all the time. When I look to the next series, I'm like, Oh, I'm really excited about uh, what I see here and different things. But I really am excited about our Christmas series. We're going to be looking at peace and the peace that uh, God offers through Jesus to the different characters and different ways in the Christmas story and how some responded to that and some didn't and how we uh, can respond to that peace in a good way and how we can receive the peace uh, during a time, you know, as, as we talked about early today's election day, when uh, we see just so much disorder and hatred in the world around us, and it's not going to end just because an election ends. Um, all this stuff is coming out of us because it's in our heart. So, how can we find true peace through Jesus this Christmas and the way God offers it to us? And so I'm excited as uh, both Garrett and I will lay out a few uh, weeks of that series. And then, of course, we have our Christmas Eve services. So that's always exciting times when see families all matching together in their outfits and decorations up and stuff like that. So I'm excited for all of that coming up. Um, but J Jonathan, in the youth ministry, youth ministry world, you just came off of a retreat from Camp Christian. Uh, how was that? And then looking forward, what do you have coming up ministry wise? Yeah, it was great. And, you know, now that fall retreat's over, I can think again. Yeah. Um, but it was such a great weekend. Um, we had so a, you had middle school and high school together? Yeah, middle school and high school up at Camp Christian. Yeah. How many kids did you have? It's 62. 62. That's awesome. Two weeks ago, so two weeks before the event, Isaac White and I, my and Isaac's the programs director at Camp Christian, him and I met. And he was like, yeah, we got 38 registered. We'll plan for like 45. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. So I over planned for 60. And then in those two weeks, we got, we jumped from 35 to 62. Yeah. And then we got yeah. another one like on Saturday. She was like, I want to come up because all my friends are there. I'm like, all right, come on. Yeah. <laughs> so we had 63 cool. Very cool. pretty much. Yeah. What was your theme for the weekend? Theme was unidentified. What does that mean? So we spent uh, four sessions looking at what it means to unidentify with our old self and re-identify with Christ. 
So Second cool. Corinthians five seventeen was kind of the the mantra of the weekend that the old has passed. The, the old has sorry, the new has come and the old has passed away. We're a new creation in Christ. So kind of looking a lot at identity, looking a lot at um, being willing to give things up that are keeping us from Christ and the difficulties that might come with that, but also that we're created with a purpose and that when we do give those things up and the old self dies, mm -hmm. it's not like we're just left high and dry. We have a new self to yeah. become a part of. And nice. um, They seem to really engage with the content, and Natalie and I had a lot of fun leading the worship. Um, it, was, it was a great weekend. There was a lot of karaoke. Uh, really? We had to add an extra slot of karaoke because so many people wanted to do it. Nice. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you could host a karaoke night here at church. Yeah. No. If I don't have to sing, I would karaoke <laughs> all the time. I don't like karaoke. But they, <laughs> they love it. So that's why Natalie runs it. Very cool. So but, what do you have upcoming here? Yeah. So my short term, we have um, the Christmas parties. That's kind of the last mm -hmm. hurrah of the year. So uh, the high school Christmas party, the middle school Christmas party will do some ridiculous gift exchanges. Cool. There is a framed photoshopped picture of all of the elders in like a cathedral. And that makes an appearance every year. Nice. And then the lucky person who gets that is <laughs> yeah. usually so very excited. Yeah, so some student right now has a picture of the elders on their bedside table. Yes. Nice. Yes, yeah. It's, on their dresser, I don't know, hanging weird. up in the bathroom. It could be anywhere. But no, that, no that's good. Yeah, that's, and then... The other half of my mind is already in June because we just had to register for CIY. So that's how yeah. early these things have to happen. Yeah. So CIY, a big summer conference. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and just a little heart to heart here with the people listening. Mm -hmm. This is the reason why we want people to sign up for things so we yes. can plan, right? <laughs> right. So, yes. And I'm, I'm looking directly into the camera right now. <laughs> the camera. If you are someone right that signs up late every time, we still love you. But that doesn't mean we like you. No, that's <laughs> not true. We, we do like you, but uh, signing up for things is important. It's not just something we do just to make it difficult for things. But like you said, like I saw some wristbands that you had for the campers downstairs, mm -hmm. your curriculum, yep. uh, the groups that you form, all that stuff's important. Mm -hmm. You know, when we did registration for Fall Fest, it's important to know how many people are coming so we have the right amount of food so you guys aren't stopping at Costco the day of to get more stuff. So. Right. Um, no, I appreciate you saying that. And, you know, so you're already looking towards the next summer. Stuff, we're registered. Right? Yeah, we, yeah so we're we, set. So we had to register with Christ and Youth Organization. Mm -hmm. You haven't had people register. F like yes. parents haven't s had to sign up their kids yet, but that'll be coming pretty soon, right? Yes. Yes. So I, I reserved mm -hmm. an guesstimate amount of spots. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. So um, yeah. that's why registration is so important because if we need more, yeah, and Any you haven't to announced more. to the kids where you're going yet, right? Not yet. Okay, Not yet. so we'll, next youth group, we'll, we're doing that. We'll keep that. Next youth group, we won't say it here, but yeah, it's exciting. They'll hear hear from you where you're going and some different activities. That's cool. So, going from middle school and high school, we'll go down in age a little bit to Allison, our director of children's ministry. Allison, what do you have? Uh, in children's ministry world right now. Sure. So I'm getting ready to help at the junior retreat at Camp Christian. Mm -hmm. um, that's fourth through sixth grade. And this is the first time the fourth through sixth graders have had a junior retreat. It's exciting. So they usually have a winter retreat um, in February, but this is the first fall one. So we're looking forward cool. to that. Um, it's you know, many churches in southwestern Pennsylvania all come to Camp Christian, but we have um, about 16 kids coming from Norwin or Norwin friends. Um, so I'm excited to yeah. see some of those kids that I see on a weekly basis and get to interact with them this weekend. What's your theme for that? The theme for that is faith strategies. So we're going to kind of take a metaphor of a battle and talk about how as Christians, we need to have offensive and defensive strategies that help us um, fight against our enemy, the devil. And are you going to allow the kids to fight with each other throughout the week? Um, we weekend? are prayerfully hoping that there will be no fights this weekend. Okay. Because my daughter's going. She can hold her own. <laughs> I, I, I fully trust her to right. get in there if you do. Right. We do have um, laser tag planned, though, so yeah. we'll get to metaphorically cool. battle out um, several times we have a, a pretty cool setup in the chapel for that. So. Very cool. So Very cool. after um, that, I think here, the next thing that I'm really thinking about is our um, parent and child um, dedication. Yeah. 
And so that's one of those things that we like to celebrate that milestone of new birth in families. Um, every year we do that in at the beginning of December. But we really, the last few years, have been adding a parent workshop along with that um, so that we can help families know that we are here to be part of a team, to join together as we help parents on their journey to disciple their children. And so it's a great morning to celebrate that new life in, in those individual families, but really to focus even more on how we can unite together as we help our children um, grow in Christ over the years. Yeah, very cool. And I'm, I'm always honored to take a part in that child dedication. And a lot of times it's, you know, the the parent is making that commitment. And so we want to make sure as a parent stands up in front of the church, you know, we're really behind that parent and we show them we're behind it. It's not just some sub small group or activity we do on the side, but it really is um, part of the DNA of us as a church and, and our values as we value family. So yeah, definitely looking forward to that. Um, coming over to you, Joshua, ministry wise, um, you know, what, what have you been up to? What are you looking forward to here at NCC? Well, we just, we just finished up with a staff meeting. We were touching on Christmas plans, things coming up for now, the Christmas let time. Let me stop you here. Sure. I think you're the only one here that when I would say, what are you looking forward to? <laughs> your first thought would be staff meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I was, you know, I was thinking I would confess at the, like the, at the onset about my interest in schedules and planning ahead, but you just brought up another confession. So <laughs> I probably do like meetings more than the average person. So confession, <laughs> confession. But I'm so glad we're all in the meeting, right? So I, so I did... It's like meeting 2.0. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you're talking about Christmas stuff, all of that. Yep. Sorry to, to butt in. Continue no, on. it's all good. So thinking ahead... The holidays, I know it's easy for us to, we're probably looking ahead and thinking, okay, there's Thanksgiving is not too far away. And then the weekend yeah. after Thanksgiving, oh, that Saturday I have this and the week that, then that Saturday. And it's like, like a lot of us may look Christmas, at our schedule yeah. and we may think, hey, our schedule's already full. Mm -hmm. And just that feeling may leave us feeling like, wow, there's, I'm already feeling stressed about the mm -hmm. holidays. And so what came to mind and just my encouragement to all of us, all of us listening is, Let's be intentional about Jesus and the holidays. And even if your schedule is full, let's take let's take the mission with us where we're going. And sometimes also we can we can write off some of our extended family opportunities, unfortunately, because mm. we've seen these people year after year and we're like, you know, they're not gonna change, they're not gonna love Jesus. And that's not fair to them. It's not fair to the Holy Spirit and the work that he's always doing. Open our minds up again and think about with wherever I'm at, whatever family gathering I'm at, with the people maybe that it's hard to be with, mm -hmm. what could be a next step with whatever individual that I happen to be with in that very gathering? So let's not let's not limit the people maybe that can be difficult in our lives, and let's not limit the work that God is doing yeah. this holiday season. Yeah. And we don't need to add another thing to our schedule. Let's just take the mission of Jesus with us wherever we're going yeah. in the holiday season. No, it's a great outlook. I mean, sometimes we don't see it as an opportunity mm -hmm. to, to reach people for Jesus. We just begrudgingly go to another dinner or party or gathering. So, no, thanks for bringing that up. That's good. Uh, Matt, as your first time here at the staff roundtable. Yes. Um, you want to talk a little bit about Thursday? Because I think, you know, when we started Thursdays, that added uh, to your plate as far as uh, overseeing tech stuff that we do on Thursdays, some scheduling things, how... How, in your view, has Thursdays been going? Um, and then what, what are you looking forward to in, in ministry? Yeah, sure. So the, uh, the Thursday services have been amazing. I am still trying to figure out how to get my schedule uh, yeah. to kind of work in the, the align, news. Yeah. Uh, yeah, align with uh, everything else that I'm doing. So... There's uh there's some days I wake up in the morning and I'm like oh no I forgot to and I was like oh no I already did or yeah so my workflow is different I'm still yeah. getting used to it yep. and uh, yeah so but Thursday services are amazing I love them I love the Good. acoustic set and I love the uh, more laid back it's kind of yeah. cool doing church at night when it's dark outside and like the stage lights mm -hmm. and yeah yeah so. 
Yeah. So, I mean, our, our attendance as far as Thursdays have been remaining pretty steady. We had uh, this last Thursday, it was on Halloween. So a lot of families were gone for that, understandably. So Matt, looking forward, what are you excited about in ministry? Any changes coming to the tech sector? Yeah. So I'm kind of in a weird spot, I feel like, with us currently looking for a new worship leader and tech director. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm i hopeful that we find one this coming year. So mm -hmm. I, on the tech side of things, I really don't want to make any like huge changes and then have somebody new come in and yeah. say these are terrible or just, you know, step on their feet. Yeah. Um, so I think tech wise, kind of some minor adjustments, mm -hmm. tightening the screws, as I always like to say. Um, so, but nothing major. <laughs> as I always like to say. As I like to say. <laughs> um, um, now, for those that don't know, Matt's job is much more than just tech. So it's not like you're leaving. Right. Oh, yeah. You yeah, no. you oversee our social media. You do... Communications. Communications. Media in yeah, general. So yeah. um, this worship position is full-time. They'll be our worship minister on Sundays up front, but they're also going to oversee the tech aspect of Sundays. Right. And you'll remain with social media, communications, different things. And all so, that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I still... I'm definitely still volunteering on the tech yeah. side of things too, yeah. running the live stream and sound. No, I understand and how those transitions uh, can be hard, but what I look forward to, and I'm sure you do too, is defining some of that when we do find somebody, yeah. you know, because yep. then we can be better in both of those areas mm -hmm. when we bring someone that has um, some understanding in that and they can tighten the screws with you. As I always say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so Very yeah. Cool. yeah. Very cool. All right, Garrett. Uh, our small groups and outreach minister. What uh, what have you been up to? I think I think it's been like it's been all summer since we've had a roundtable. So what have you been doing mm -hmm. with your summer? And then what have you been looking forward to? I mean that that with encapsulates summer. like an entire yeah that's start of the to, small group season. It was and all a that. busy summer for me. I like typically summers slow down. I think this one sped up compared. I. I don't know. We just had a lot going on with, with the church. I was fortunate enough to preach different places. And um, so it was, it was just a busy summer overall. Mm -hmm. Small groups take a break during the summer, but we still had a lot of groups, more than usual, meeting in a variety of ways during the summer. And, um, so that was that was neat. I just did the numbers for, um, for our groups for the fall. Um, we've had... 34 groups this fall. Very cool. And uh, I think it was 416 people in those groups. Wow. Um, but th that's some people are in more than one group. Some people are in more than, are in three groups or four <laughs> groups. It's crazy. Um, but I, th I think the unique number of people, so like just individual people is like 361. So 361, that's, that's huge. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the most we've ever had um, as far as I know. Um, so that's really, really neat. And, um, it's hard to believe we're all, I'm already planning for winter and spring groups. So mm -hmm. trying to figure out which groups are going to continue into the winter, spring. Some of the groups are just one-offs, um, where it's like doing a specific study for just the fall. Um, so trying to put new groups in place, just, I'd like to have an average of, an, uh, a group number that allows for an average of like 11 people per group. Mm. So we have to try to stay around that 35 number mark um, or like 32 to 35 number mark to, to kind of keep that level where mm. I'd like it to be. Um, so navigating all that on the outreach side of things, we have a lot um, happening too with um, some different things coming up. Um, we're supporting a couple of different ministries with um, Thanksgiving meals that, that they're doing. Mm -hmm. So um, the Father's Heart's doing a, a Thanksgiving meal. We're helping out with some of that food. And um, same thing with the Dream Center. Um, we have um, a big gift-giving drive that's coming up that, that we do every year with His Place. Yeah. So we sh that should be getting announced December 1st. Um, and we'll we'll do shoe boxes. Yeah, the shoe boxes like we always do, and you'll you'll grab a, the name of of a, a student um, in a, a school in, in Pittsburgh that we partner with, and um, 
bring back the gift and, and we'll deliver it. So I'm looking forward to doing that. That's that's coming up right around the corner. Um, and then food pantry is always ongoing and, you know, cool. different, um, a lot of different programs and partnerships that we have. They're just kind of always going on behind the scenes of things. Cool. Yeah. Oh, and I, get, I forgot about the, the um, uh, characters of Christmas. Like you're doing the, I don't know if I should give away your sermon series. Oh, you're, you I, already I talked said about on the piece, piece a little yeah. Bit. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. you're using the yeah, yeah. characters right. like to go behind the right. piece. And then we're also doing that ad, an Advent study, kind of similar to the Hebrew study that we did in the summer. Only this time it's it's seven sessions, two videos per week, and each video is going to give context and background on on a specific set of characters. So, mm-hmm. like the first one is. Um, the characters of Christmas is the prophets, the the people who predicted the coming of Christ. The second one is um, uh, the cousins. They're talking about John the Baptist and Zachariah and Elizabeth. And so kind of following that, um, we'll do seven yeah. different episodes. Yeah. Um, so it'd be kind of a personal study for somebody to yeah. access, and you'll we'll get the information out to everybody mm-hmm. at the church if they want to participate in that, yeah. and kind of up to you to do it. Yeah, you know, the twice a week, and we'll send out an email similar to the Hebrew study, where it'll each day, each time it releases, it'll go to an email, yeah. and and you can click on the link and watch the video. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one of the reasons, and you all in this room could speak into this too. One of the reasons we do that, and the other supplements that we have to Sunday morning, whether whether it be a large program like our small groups, whether it be smaller things like a a, a study we do, or um, Matt sends out the weekly devotion after the sermon. All of that is part of our growth process and how we believe as disciples, uh, we're not just static individuals that, um, you know, once a week is enough and I, I fill myself up for 45 minutes as I sit and I worship God and then that's it. I go throughout my week. Um, but to know as disciples of Christ, we're always growing and one person's going to grow one way and another person's going to grow another way. You know, you you may hear about a study that we do and you're like, man, I'm not really into that. But there might be another group we do that you're really into. So we want to get not as much, not as, you know, we, we know we can't do everything in the world, but as much as possible, we try to put out more things and more groups and more opportunities for you to uh, grow. And our growth process here at NCC is uh, something we unveiled in January this year and really been trying to integrate it in different ways as we see people come. You got to come to know who Jesus is. You got to come uh, to church, but also come to an understanding of who Jesus is. He's Lord of your life. Uh, the second aspect is to connect. Uh, we believe we're made for connections, uh, whether it be in groups or through ministries or just talking in the lobby to other people. Uh, we want to create those opportunities for you to connect. Um, the third aspect of the growth process is grow. Uh, it's not meant for you to just sit and talk. It's for you to sit and talk and grow through those conversations, grow through worship, grow through uh, Bible study, grow through praising God and, and song, all the different things we do around here to grow. Uh, but we can't we can't finish that off just with grow. We then have to go. We have to go and tell others. And so a lot of things that we do go back to that growth process and um the, the vision that we have for NCC. And so I think what you've heard a little bit today from us, man, we're excited about the things that are before us. We're excited about uh, the opportunities we just got done with, like Jonathan doing camp. He's excited about that, but we're not just sitting there, you know, you're still working this week and you got more things ahead of you. And uh, so we're excited about where things are going and, and the things that God continually puts a, in front of us. I was just going to affirm what you were saying. So, sorry. <laughs> I saw you grabbing the microphone. And I, as you were talking about that, I really like how um, a couple of things, our growth process really isn't a, a linear. It, it really mm-hmm. kind of cycles mm-hmm. over and over yeah. again. Um, and so I think that's important to remember that, that those things as we walk with Christ and as the Holy Spirit makes us more and more like him, um, those opportunities just need to keep coming back into our lives and we need to make sure that we're continuing on. It's not a, well, I connected and now I can check that 
off the list. But the other thing that I was thinking of with Garrett talking about doing the, um, the characters of Christmas, I really encourage you if you didn't do yeah. the Hebrew study or if you did do it to um, get involved because I'm noticing um, the connection then into our small groups and into our conversations. I've had people um, where I've had conversations they've been, and they've said, well, remember when Garrett talked about this in the Hebrew study and they might be discussing that in our small group, which is not about Hebrews. So the fact that each one of these opportunities that we avail ourselves of really just create a time where we can learn l- more and more about scripture mm-hmm. and then they start to build together so that in other contexts we can draw into past learning that we did and that can help us continue. So I think I'm really looking forward to um, that characters of Christmas because I know it will impact the way I look at the Christmas story and maybe help us um, with some of those things that culturally or traditionally we look at the Christmas story a certain way. Mm-hmm. Maybe this will clarify some of those and we can look back and say, oh, that's not actually the way we set up the nativity isn't exactly how the Bible relates yeah. that story. And maybe we can um, get some better yeah. insight yeah. into that. I think the big one for me, like talking about nativities is the angel, the depiction of the angel and how how probably wrong that is. Um, it's a messenger of God. Anytime you see a messenger of God in um, scripture, it's not a big fluffy thing with wings. It's intimidating. There's a reason why the shepherds were fearful. (laughs) It wasn't because they were wimps. It was because (laughs) there was a heavenly being um, that's often depicted in scripture as a military being and standing in front of them and a whole host of them standing in front of them. So yeah, I think there's a lot. That's a good point. Very cool. Um, so as we are getting ready to wrap up, uh, this podcast will probably come out close to Thanksgiving time. I want everybody to go around, tell me your favorite Thanksgiving food, like traditional Thanksgiving food. I'll start. It is uh, the cheap cranberry sauce in a can. You know, still got like the ripples on it from coming out of the can. Uh, it just does something for me that I just... Is, is there... An argument in your family between um, the canned versus the like handmade or homemade cranberry sauce, and no. the juice. What the is family it? doesn't I, argue. We we okay. get along because yeah. <laughs> Natalie's no. very much so, for the can, but and others in her family are, are much for the. Um, I don't know what is it sauce like. It is cranberry sauce. Okay. I, yeah, I Jonathan's still trying to figure it. out life. Um, but, <laughs> We, we do, we, we don't really cook our own Thanksgiving. Uh We tend to go to Cracker Barrel because it's just us as a family and then the kids aren't stuck with eating 30 pounds of turkey each, Yeah, you know, so we, we go there. So you force good people at Cracker Barrel to make you food on your Thanksgiving. Oh, Oh. time and a half. Uh, (laughs) They get a good time and a half. Yeah. Um, So that's, that's been our our tradition. So we don't really have that argument because it's not like it's a non thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's not an option. Yeah. So beyond your fight about cranberry sauce, what's your favorite yeah. thing to eat? I love green bean casserole mm. Mm. with, with bacon. Sure. You put whatever you want in it. Yeah. But green bean casserole. Okay. Yeah. I really like the crunchy stuff on top. Yeah. Like the onion straws. Things, yeah. I guess whatever so. They're called. Yeah. Okay. I just really like it. That's all. <laughs> that is all. All right, Garrett, what about you? Oh, gosh. I don't know. Probably sweet potato casserole. I, I love sweet potato casserole. With the marshmallows on top? I, it doesn't have to have marshmallows, but it does have to have, like, we, I think, put pecans on it. Mm. Yeah, something, like, crunchy. Pecans or pecans? Pecans. 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 I, I don't think I say pecan pie, pecan pie. <laughs> I don't know. I think I use them interchangeably. I'll think about it too much now. Yeah, now I, I'm definitely going to think about it too much. <laughs> I think I say pecan pie. That's like saying toucan <laughs> instead, of, <laughs> instead of what? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah, could you like me to go I, ahead with I my answer? I knew they should share I my think answer. of toucan right. Sam. Toucan like, Sam? <laughs> yeah, you don't say toucan Sam. You say toucan Sam. Right, like so it's loop. pecan. Bird. 
pecan yeah, pie. I, just say, I don't see how that makes me wrong. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, he's right on this one. I'm going to go ahead and jump yeah, in with yeah, my no. Thanksgiving food answer. Um, mine is stuffing. I get a very tiny serving of turkey, but a very large serving of stuffing, and I usually go back for seconds. I feel like we have to comment on that. I just That's, <laughs> that's fine. We'll just let it go. Do you put gravy on the stuffing and... Not typically, no. Uh, the best is getting like a bed of stuffing, some turkey, and then dousing it in gravy. Yeah, I would. I was going to say uh, stuffing with gravy. Absolutely. But then I heard pumpkin pie and I was like, oh, that's pretty good too. Um, I didn't know if that was like one of the choices because yeah, that's more dessert. Yeah. 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 We'll, but, we'll let it slide. But I would go, yeah, definitely gravy, gravy on stuffing. But I did think of something like super serious we need to address is we need like a penalty box when someone mentions Sunday services and doesn't mention Thursday night. I was thinking the same thing. I, man, I'm with you over there. I almost jumped in Who and said that, th- you. What did it, I say? Oh, many times. Th- <laughs> just in this podcast. You would say uh, about what we do on Sundays. I apologize Thursday <laughs> night people for forgetting about you. Hey, we're, we're all there. We're all there. We're this all there. past for your week was the first time I preached on Thursday and I immediately said, good morning. <laughs> like, like glad, to ha- glad you're here this morning. And I get so embarrassed. It's hard. All right. So w- what's your final answer for your favorite Thanksgiving food? Well, the problem is, I mean, honestly, I no, thought, no, 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 I no, thought, no, 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 no. no, I thought well, about the gravy on stuffing, go too long. <laughs> but then, but then Allison mentioned stuffing and then Garrett, it, I don't want to be like a copycat, but true. Yeah. It's, it's gravy on stuffing. That's okay. You could say, yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's why you're sharing a mic because you both enjoy the same okay, Thanksgiving yeah. thing. There we go. Well, right, Matthew. I'm going to be a copycat as well because it's definitely stuffing for me. I don't like turkey. Um, I load up on stuffing and it's the stuffing that has sausage in it. Really, really good. And, oh, yeah. It's yes. so good. But the, the problem is I like it so much. I eat way too much of it every year, and I know I'm going to be sick that night and the next day, and I am, but I still do it every single year, and I, you, I can't I, wait. I, I, I must ever, be eating the wrong stuffing. I've, I've never, never liked stuffing. Stuffing with sausage in it. That sounds uh, immaculate. It is. It's, it's, it's delicious. It's maybe next we'll, level. Maybe Who we'll bring this? you. Yeah. We could, Matt, you could set aside a portion of yours <laughs> to bring in the that. following week. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you're not sick, Matt. Yeah, no. <laughs> we'll take one for the team and eat your stuffing All for right, you, there Matt. you go. Yeah, no, I'm not going to share. <laughs> All right, wow. Well, if you are still listening to this, we appreciate it. We, uh, as you could tell, when we get together, we just like to talk. We are good friends and uh, we love working with one another. And it probably comes out a little bit as you guys have uh, told us. And so uh, we do like doing these round tables. We'll have some more uh, podcast of substance coming out soon. <laughs> uh, but we enjoyed getting together during this time where we look over uh, the last few months of what we've done and we continue to look forward and what's coming ahead for us in ministry and both personal wise. So again, we thank you for listening to this. I really appreciate uh, if you come either on Thursdays or on Sundays, NCC, with, uh, you know, both those options. We'd love to see you at either of those services. Uh, but we also just really appreciate you being connected to NCC in any way. Maybe it is just listening to a podcast because you live further away. Maybe you listen to the live stream on Sunday mornings. Again, just all of those things to get out there because we know we need to continue to grow as disciples of Jesus and Uh, From the beginning of our conversation where we shared the ways we've messed up in ministry in different ways, you know, we have a lot of growth to go to. uh, And so we're growing along with you. We just hope this podcast is maybe one more resource to make that happen. But again, thank you for being with us today. Uh, God bless and uh, thank you. Thank you for tuning into NCC Unplugged. If you've enjoyed our podcast, please be sure to rate and review it and share it with your friends and family. If you are interested in learning more about Norwin Christian Church, visit our website at norwinchristianchurch.com. We also invite you to join us at NCC for one of our three services, Sundays at 8.45 and 10.30 a.m. and Thursdays at 7 p.m. We have engaging classes for all ages, ensuring there is something meaningful for everyone in our church community. Thanks once again for listening, and we hope you have a great week.